Hey everybody, it's OK Fixer. Um, welcome back to my garage. This is our garage built, our home built uh, Volkswagen engine. I've gotten uh, uh, several comments on it already and uh, have a lot of negatives about it, but I've got a, or I have some negatives about it. But I've got a, um, a saying, and of course you know what that saying is, the proof is in the pudding. A couple of things um, that you need to do before you put your oil pump in, and I forgot to do this, and I should have done that because I have, I have the studs, uh, but we put a slightly thicker oil pump in, and so I'm going to, because it's a larger volume, I'm going to take these studs out and I'm going to replace them because there's not a meat, enough meat on the on the stud uh, for the nut to go on. So I'm going to replace these. Um, I have an old engine in the back and a couple old engines in the back that I haven't thrown away, a couple old cases and, and they're just knackered cases, they're, they're not any good but the studs, the studs are good so you can take a, a nut and put another nut on that like that and then you can thread that stud in be careful of your aluminum case on your oil pump. You don't want to scratch that. And uh, you want to get this in there uh, with plenty of meat. And it allows... Let me use my vice grips on the outside. That it, it allow the, uh, the nut to, to easily go on. And, and these are... Uh, a little bit longer they might look a little goofy when you get up underneath uh, but I don't care and uh, this has a little collar in the center uh, the original ones didn't have a collar and this one has a little collar so you want to make sure that that collar goes past goes past your oil pump and it should and that way uh, the bolt will have yeah like that there you go that's good that way the bolt will have or the nut rather uh, won't get hung up on the stud You can see where those are going to be just a little bit longer than they should. And put that top on there and the nut, and, and they'll stick out probably, you know, a quarter of an inch or something of threads left on it. But uh, that's fine with me as long as I've got enough to uh, secure that on there good. Let me get the other ones in there and I'll be right back with you. All right, uh, we have both of our gears in, we have our studs in. Um, one thing about your stud is your, your stud, if you keep going with your stud, it'll go all the way into the cam. So only go as far as the original stud was in there and leave enough out. The ones with the little collar, uh, keep it from going in any farther and uh, only the threads get in there. So again, we, sh we should be fine. There's, there's no rubbing or gnashing of teeth. So everything's fine there. Um, there's two little dots on these gears. I put them adjacent to each other in the event that I want to take this back apart again. I can photograph that and see uh, where they are exactly in relation. Go back to my photograph and I can set those exactly in the same way. That way one gear is running off the other. But a new pump is $28. So yeah. Okay, why did you put uh, different studs in is because my 
pump housing is thicker. This is a, a little bit bigger volume pump. Um, and, and so the casing is a little bit thicker out here. So, of course, you have to have uh, a little bit longer studs. Now, this groove here is a design. And what it's designed to do, it's designed to, uh, if the pump leaks, it's designed to uh, focus the oil back into the pump. Uh, see this little slot right here? Say if pump, oil comes out here, it'll, it whips it around and puts it right back into the pump. It's quite an ingenious little system there. It uses the pump's pressure to whip it right back in there. So we don't want to put any gasket sealant on that, in that line. Like I said, we don't want to. So, I'm just paint a little bit on there like so. And she'll be fine. Let me finish this and I'll be right back to you. I'm not using a new plate, I'm using the old plate. And as you can see, the pump wear is right here and here. So, would you put it like this? Well, I'm not going to. I'm going to put it right here and here. And that way it gives it a new, sort of a new surface to, to ride on. Sort of. Put our gasket on. So I don't know why that guy was getting so obtuse with me. I mean, I'm just building a backyard engine for God's sakes. Uh, and then uh, it dawned on me that he does that professionally. Uh, I think that was his website, the one with the uh, with the uh, the Ramich pickup truck and the uh, KDF uh, KDF uh, KDF wagon sand rail. <laughs> no, 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 nothing, nothing that severe. But you know, three liter engines with uh, with uh, turbochargers and uh, and uh, aftermarket oil coolers with giant fans and all this other nonsense. That I think is nonsense. I mean, if you want to do that, God bless you. Go right ahead. It's awful expensive. Me, I'm, I'm not inter I'm not interested in that. So, but uh, maybe uh, maybe it wasn't that at all. Maybe it was just an ass gasket. I don't know. So whatever, whatever, buddy. Whatever. Let's see. That one's wrong because it went in all the way, so we're going to have to take that back out and uh, take it out of there because it went in too far. Uh, the reason why it pulled the, the, the stud or chased the stud in farther is because um, the uh, when, when I tried to tighten it up, it, it pulled the thread inside there when it didn't have enough, uh, it didn't have enough purchase. So I ended up having to run a tap into that bowl to fix it. Did I mention putting a little... A little sealant right there and uh, it'll help to seal up those nuts. These were using the original ones so uh, uh, yeah so studs are sticking out about the same about the same length so let's get our let's get our 14 now on that 
and we're going to go our uh, 14 foot pounds on that. And we'll crisscross. Now, see if this has changed any. No, nothing. No rubbing. No wailing or gnashing of teeth. Okay, next thing I'm going to find is my uh, pressure relief valve and my oil plate, strainer, gaskets, da 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 da, and we'll put those on next. Brother Brian sent me some silicone gaskets. We're going to try from Wolfsburg West. I have a stud here missing, uh, so we're going to make do. For right now, until I find it, I'm sure I'll find it. And these go together without any sealant. Be sure and use your washer and your stop nut. So let's get these on. Sometimes you can uh, start a couple without any washers on them and it'll bring everything down. Then you can take them off once you get them a couple other ones on there with enough thread that you can put a washer on there. Sort of like that. Okay, I just put a Captain Obvious bolt in there with a washer on it. Uh, probably later on, if I can't find it, I'll just go out to the uh, engine pile and grab a stud. And uh, yeah, there you go. So, uh, sometimes that's the way it works. Uh, next we want to do is our pressure relief valve. Uh, we're going to get it nice and oily. What is that on there? Big old wad of snot in there. I don't know. Sorry, I've lost my battery. Uh, let me take this back off. The uh, pressure valve goes down there with the cup facing up and the flat side facing down, then the spring, and it should be about that much sticking out. I painted my uh, gasket and the surface with a little bit of gasket, uh, uh, the compound, the case compound I used, and that'll just kind of help us. Uh, Not a very good screwdriver. Let's uh, see if we can find a better screwdriver.
there you go. We're going to tighten that up with a little uh, action like this also. That should be good. Next is going to be our pressure switch. If you wind against the thread that is opposite of the thread, see we're going to we're going to wind left instead of right. So when you thread this in, since since the tape is going this way, it's not peeling all off. And uh, we'll tighten that up. I don't know what size it is. These will fit it though. You don't need to bottom that out in the block. You'll feel it tighten up and that should be plenty. Especially with tape on it. I've taken the engine off the engine stand for a reason. Um, we don't have any cylinders on and the last thing we did was screw our oil pressure switch in. Um, the next thing I want to do is check for end play. And uh, you know, you can check for end play at the end of your build, but if your end play is all screwed up, then you got to take it all back apart again, right? But, you know, you have to look at that, so about now is the time. I, I don't have a seal in here, and I don't have the O-ring in my uh, flywheel, and that way it'll just fit really nice. There's three uh, shims. And I have the thin one in the center. Um, essentially, they move, and so if 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 I have a shim against a shim, it's okay. But these two surfaces are big, hard, and I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter. <laughs> I just put it in the center, okay? So we're going to put this on, and then we're going to put up a measuring device here, and we're going to pull this back and forth and see. These are my original shims, so I have an original flywheel, I have uh, the, the thrust cut back to original specs, uh, it's got a fatter bearing inside, but it should be the same, um, it, and, and I have a, a Chinese crank, and it should be the same if everything, is, everything was machined properly. So let's get this flywheel on, and I'll rig up a, a deal where I can pull this back and forth, and and check how many thousands. Ideally we want between I think three and six or we want five or six and seven or something. I have to look in my book and see but the book will tell you. Okay this is why I took this engine apart to begin with was end play. The end play was too much. It was like really schlocky. Uh, that engine, that Mexican engine is really schlocky also. It's probably got about ten or twelve thousandths of an inch end play if not more. Um, you can feel a valve when you adjust the valve and you kind of feel and you know what six thousandths is. It's that little clunk, 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 clunk kind of a thing. And you can pull this back and you can push it forward. And you can kind of feel about what you have. is about the same. So let's, let's put a measuring device on that and see what we have. And again, without the seal on the flywheel and without the uh, main seal things move a whole lot easier and you can get things set. Now of course we're going to take it back apart again put a seal on the flywheel and a main seal in it but let's just set our let's just uh, set this first. Let me get a measuring device on there. I've got sort of a Rube Goldberg affair here. I have a a big bolt and a socket to take up the, the slack. I have my uh, dial indicator here. We're going to set this to zero. Okay.
and what we have is almost ten thousandths of an inch, which is too much. I'm having to kind of swat it back and forth because the the gears and the uh, and the, in the on the ring gear on the flywheel and the holders kind of they're kind of binding a little bit. So you kind of whack it back and forth. So we're too big. Okay, keeping that into mind, we need about five thousandths less. Less. Five thousandths more. So uh, we're going to have to find another shim or different shims. So let's get out the uh, caliper and a couple of different shims and have a look. And it's always something, isn't it? Okay, um, here's our, we've got an 11 there, oh, we got a 10 there, and we got an 8 there, so I've got, let's see, what do I got here, I got a 12, we can swap that with an 8 and that'll give us 4 more. And I've got, that's a 9, that's a 10, a 10, do we have a 9? That's an 11, da, da, da. let's see here, that's a 9-er. Okay, so let's swap that 9 for the 11, or the 10, that'll give us 1. And we'll swap our 8 for our 12, and that will give us 5. So that should put us in the 5, five area if we use these three. So let's use these three and see what happens. We'll put it back together. I adjusted this a little bit um, so the flywheel would come in and out and not bind on those gears. So I have us zeroed. So we're a tick over four. So I'm thinking three to five and at four, hey, that looks good to me. Oh, look at it. That's nice. <laughs> I ripped my glove. Okay, uh, so we're good there. So let's take this apart and we can put our seal and our uh, O-ring on our flywheel. Beautiful.
Oh, again, you know, take your time. Don't let someone come in and talk to you and get you thinking about other stuff. Lock the door if necessary. Get your zen on. Think about what you're doing. Do it neatly and deliberately. Blah, blah, blah. I like to paint a little sealant around these just to, just to get my hands all sticky while I'm putting it in. How about that? Oh, that is sticky too. If you have a seal installer, by all means. keeps coming out. <laughs> it keeps coming out of there. There she goes. Oh, it keeps coming out. That's funny. Pretty good. Probably keep coming out of there. Probably because I see what I put on there. I'm going to walk away from this for a while and see if it doesn't come out of there and if it comes out of there I'll whack it back in but I think it'll be okay I don't think she wants to come out of there I got it in there as far as it'll go and then I you know what you can do is you can take a big screwdriver and just pound on it until it comes out the other side no, I'm just joking um, it's not right up against here it's in there a little ways. It's got a little lip. Maybe a sixteenth of an inch or something like that. So I'm going to walk away from this until that sealant kind of sets up and make sure that's going to stay in there. Then we'll put our flywheel on. We're good. Look over your work again. Make sure things are correct. This thing being so, uh, being, uh, oh, I greased my uh, gland nut also. Cleaned it and greased it, but I did that a long time ago. That was some of the stuff I did that, sorry I bumped you. That was some of the stuff I did while uh, I was waiting for parts. Okay, let's put a little zap on that now. Let's see here. Now where did that go to? It's like uh, it's like a continual look for stuff. <laughs> Be right back.
flywheel lock is what I was looking for and uh, lowered the center of gravity on this uh, pump cart and we'll give it a little zap here. Now, 235 foot-pounds. I don't have a uh, um, I don't have a torque wrench for that so I'm going to give it what I think is let me give it, sorry I bumped you again. Jeez! Okay. I'm pretty certain if it needs more than that, we're, uh, we're in trouble. I can't turn it anymore. Okay, I think we're good. So, you know, I'm not building a, 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 a methanol dragster, okay, engine for a, 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 you know, double turbo, three liter, whatever. No, I'm not doing that. 53 horsepower. I, I think that the gland nut will be okay. But there's a handy little tool, wa? It's got, uh, come on out of there. It's got a bunch of different holes for different engines, too. So, um, you put a bar in there, you can make it, make it longer. Pretty cool, huh? Made by uh, uh, Mid-America Motor Works. I got it with the 67 over there. All right, got this done. We'll take our flywheel lock off so everything moves again. Again, we're going to spin the engine to see that everything turns good. We're going to set this up on number one. I'll show you how, and we'll put the, we'll put the uh, distributor drive in. Just a little back. That's your four thousandths. We're sweet right there. See this load of crap right here? Why in the hell won't that slide underneath there? Why wouldn't they make it so it slid underneath? Okay, what I'm going to do... I'm going to cut this bastage down just like this. Cut this off first and then I'll put this back on and I'll just weld it right up. That way it'll slide underneath. By God, I just can't believe that they build stuff like this. Whatever you do, don't bend that. Okay. There you go. Don't beat on that with a hammer. Okay. and soda. Yeah! I hope no bad people come. Yeah!
look, baked enamel. That's about time that happened. That's nice. That's great. I needed to do that a long time ago. Okay, uh, we got it back on the stand. Let's uh, set it up on uh, TDC. And I'll show you how to do that and we'll put the uh, distributor drive in. Okay, your pulley is keyed so it can only go on one way. Um, you have three marks here on this engine and this is a 69 so you're going to have 0, 5 and 7.5 so I marked the 7.5 but across from the 0 I put a mark 180 out okay 7.5 is going to be my timing 0 is there so we're going to set our valves there 180 out but that's my timing mark also, we're going to put this on, and it fits very nicely. Notice how nicely it fits because, because it's an original piece and it's the original case. So it fits really well. And now is the time, if you don't have enough of the, 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 the screw type, uh, the straight slot for your tin, now is the time to gain two more of those bolts. They always get lost, but if you want you can put just a uh, six point there and there and the pulley covers it and no one will ever see it so let's get uh, that put together everything you do to your engine make sure it turns okay here's our timing mark you think it's that one it's not it's the first one is zero okay now we can either be um, you know, we could be right on or we can be 180 out. Okay, remember the crankshaft turns uh, four times to two turns of the um, camshaft. Uh, you know, two to one uh, in the whole cycle. Okay, see, this is being TDC, top dead center. Okay, or maybe not. Depends on uh, the cylinder. Okay, so of course you got you got TDC which is firing and then you've you got squash bang squash suck bang blow okay so you know it's squashed it's firing right now uh, it's it pulling down so that's your power stroke it's coming back up again and that's your exhaust stroke coming back down again and that's your intake stroke come coming around again and that's your firing or your your power or your ignition stroke so uh, let's look inside and see where we're at. Since we're on TDC right here, I'm going to take you off. Well, I do it when the block is apart so I can see. Yeah, you know, I just do things a little different. And you see the cam, and you see the lobes, and... I believe that is TDC because the lobes are around the other side. Well, that one's there, but I'll show you here. Clockwise, it's going to turn that way. See? There we are. Okay, is that cam lobe right there? Okay, the engine is turning. The engine, the crankshaft is turning this way, but of course the camshaft is turning this way. So that cam lobe, right there, the last one, is going that way. And this cam lobe is on the other side 
also. So we don't have to worry about that. That's TDC. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing this around and I'm going to look at it. And Captain Obvious will poke you right in the eye, okay? It'll say, oh, because the other side will be coming up on, 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 on like a compression strip or, or a to open the valves. So we don't want that. We want the valves off because that's TDC where it's going to fire. So both valves would be closed. The cam lobes would be out of the way. The valve train would be relaxed. The springs would be open. The valves would be closed and it would fire. That's where you want that TDC right there. I'm going to swing it around once more and have a little look at it, but I'm pretty sure that's certain and we'll put the distributor drive in. Okay, let's look at this. Here's our first mark, which is TDC, okay, or what I think is TDC, okay, and you have the connecting rod on number one. Let's just focus on number one. The connecting rod on number one is up, okay. This being the the exhaust valves are on the outside. These two are exhaust and these two are intake. The exhaust is here. Okay, so you see, let me see if I can get this. Let me see if I can get you to see this. You can see what we're going to do is we're going to come, we're going we're gonna to go clockwise here and it's going to go kaboom. Okay. And we're going to come up to our halfway point. There's our halfway point. Kaboom. And what's going to happen is it's the rod is down. All right. That was our power stroke. Now it's coming back up in the last lobe right there. See if I can see it. Is right there and it's opening the valve to exhaust us. Okay. That's our exhaust. So our exhaust has happened right there okay and now the engines coming around again and it's it's creating a vacuum while the intake valve right there is opening okay so the pistons coming down creating a vacuum intake valve opens okay and then it comes that's halfway and now both valves are closed and it hits right there. That's the ignition stroke. So we are, uh, we are correct. That's number one TDC. We don't have it 180 out. So we're fine. So that's where it should be. Exactly where it should be. Now we, uh, we'll put the uh, distributor drive in because we know we're correct. Because you looked at the valves and you ran the sequence. There's four parts to your distributor drive. There's the distributor drive itself, two washers, and a spring. The spring goes in afterwards right there and the two washers will go on there with some grease. Put some grease on there so it holds it in place, okay? And then you have a backwards D, okay? If it was if it was like this, it would be a D. Okay, so it's a backwards D. All right, you see, you see how it's got a, a fatter spot over here than a thinner spot over there. So this is the D, and you want it backwards. Okay, that's the way it's going to look while it goes in there. Now, when you put it in there like this, it's going to end up about like this. So you need to come back about like that and drop it in. Another good thing to have is a is a tool that holds that in place okay or get yourself a paint stick and cut it down and, and knock it in there and you can use that as a handle to fit that in and out oil everything grease everything oil everything so it moves in and out of that hole really easy okay and uh, the uh, the idiots book is the only book that has that Okay, the, uh, the, the Bentley book does not have that. So, let's get started.
Now, you won't get that straight. But I'll show you what you want. I can get this. Okay. <clears throat> I want you to notice the relation of the diaphragm. Is not straight it's kicked just a tick if you look in the book it's kicked just a tick that little notch right there is number one there's number one number our TDC and we're aligned with the case okay we'll put a bolt on that and that way if you rotate your engine the distributor drive won't come up it'll keep it in place so we're all timed Getting a little ahead of myself. Pull that back out of there and put your spring in. Okay, next would be your studs. Um, is it long ones on the top and short ones on the bottom? No, it's short ones on the top and long ones on the bottom. I think. Short ones on the top. And long ones on the bottom, about like that, about like that. Hey, those aren't chromoly studs. No, they're the old original dirty ones. <laughs> I'm just going to use them again. Psst, 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 psst. Okay, you talked me into it. I shot a little engine enamel on them after I did a little wire wheel job on them. If you double up a nut on the stud and then tighten it up, you can use the top one to turn the stud in and you're not putting any marks on your stud. I don't know if it's possible, but I, but I think if you don't have inserts, you can screw these studs in there quite a ways where it's possible, I guess. Uh, where if you went in there far enough, the the it, it might might hit the the uh, throw of the crankshaft. I uh, I doubt it, but maybe. So watch what you're doing. Um, and like I said uh, earlier, the first video I had on this, we did a pull on the studs on this case, and uh, the case didn't make it. So I had them not put two in that. Uh, uh, the two that were there, I had them do all of them. Okay, so to thrust cut this case, uh, to line bore this case, to put these uh, studs in with a set of bearings, it was $205. So I, I thought that was very reasonable for everything to fit. But anyways, studs are very important and you and you got to have, they got to be strong and they got to be in there because you're putting uh, you're putting your cylinder heads that have no gaskets on them uh, have to be 
have to be torqued down and you're putting a lot of pull on that magnesium that old rotten magnesium so if you uh, if you put uh, the case savers in there it'll 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 you won't have headaches or you buy a new case yeah probably should have done this from the get-go but I didn't because uh, I'm a trusting fool uh, but put a little oil on this pin doesn't have to be a lot you don't have to slather it with it but you want to make sure that the pin fits very nice and evenly and easy in your rods okay uh, that's why I'm having those other rods re uh, rebushed now also if your rods uh, are the bushings are in them are shot it doesn't make any sense for you to put put your engine together because it's just gonna it's gonna destroy itself you're gonna rough up these pins and they're not gonna want to come out of the pistons and you're gonna ruin a piston set for that so don't do that wait the time or buy some new rods or find somebody who will bush them for them if you bush them they have to have a pin a new pin to, uh, if they do it right that is because the bushings are they just came they just come rough and then they have to be then they have to be cut once they're pushed in um, original bushings I think have a slot in them so if you look in it and they're cracked if they look like they're cracked they're not really cracked it's got a slot in it I think also there is an oil hole at the top and you want to make sure that oil hole that the bushing hasn't turned and it's blocking off the oil because if it blocks off the oil hole your pin isn't going to get oiled it's going to seize up on there and it's going to break your rod or really tear up your bushing or your pin so those are all things to look at also next we're going to look at our piston set um, I have a molly set uh, these if you look around um, I got these for two hundred dollars shipped to my house so free shipping and two hundred bucks pretty good deal uh, for mollies now this is an 85.5 which is a 1600 that engine originally was 1500 which is 1498 or 1496 or something like that these are a little bit bigger uh, so it'll give it a little extra added thump. Um, there's a reason Volkswagen never went bigger than 1600 cc's on these. And there, there's a reason for it. And the reason is, uh, if this is my opinion, so you know you can take this with a uh, grain of salt, whatever you want to do. And the reason is that uh, the uh, thickness of the cylinder and uh, the bore of the uh, the bore of the block uh, of the case and all the all the uh, uh, parameters therein, 1600 cc would be. The Altman, or the, the biggest size that they would do uh, to make the engine last long and to have um, uh, good reliability uh, and, you know, a 100,000 mile performance. That's my opinion. So, you know, going 94 millimeter slip-ons or you know bump, bumping your size up past 1600 cc well people say you can do it and people do it all the time uh, and you probably find uh, people who have uh, you know 1776 or 1835 engines with 100,000 miles on them uh, but likely not likely not uh, but what you have here in the blue beetle is a 1600 cc fuel injected engine with over 150,000 miles on it. It was fuel injected so it didn't wash off the you know wash the oil off the cylinder walls like a like a carburetor would and a choke. So that's why it lasted so long but heat cycles and such like that on an air-cooled engine 150,000 miles. Now brother Brian had a Vanagon which was a 2 liter engine and it had 
Are you ready for it? 350,000 miles. And it never had the heads off of it. Now, he drove it like a, you know, like a nun, you know, 55, maybe 60 miles an hour. It got mobile, mobile one oil changes every 3,000 miles. And anything and everything that went wrong with it, he fixed. But that's 350,000 miles on that engine. Now, that's a two liter engine. Okay. Well, Dan, you just said that the bigger blah, 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 blah. Right, but that's a completely different case, and it has to fit the hole here. So, of course, they just did the same thickness, but in two liters. So, you know, the whole cylinder was so much bigger. So, those eggheads at Volkswagen, I'm telling you, I... <laughs> But, but I, I I get a lot of comments about oh, yeah I built, about built a three liter engine and went four hundred thousand miles, yeah okay, but understand something that made what made Volkswagens so dependable, and people fall in love with them was their dependability uh, and their reliability and all those little things that the Germans did such as not go any bigger than. 1598 or you know 85.5s 1600 cc all those little things that they did such as that you know went to their longevity it went to their ability to to perform so that's what people fell in love with is the reliability and the longevity of that cheap little car and uh, you know when you start when you start adding to it or trying to re-engineer it, in my opinion, and it's only my opinion, everybody has an opinion. If you want to have opinions and put them on your website and put them on your YouTube page, Pajalista, go right ahead. You do whatever you want to. But in my opinion, uh, you know, 1600 cc, that's about as big as you want to go because that's what all that Volkswagen ever did. And realistically, how much more are you going to get out of you know uh, a little bit more a little bit more say 1835 you're going to make that you're going to make this thin you're going to make this thin and it, in the heat cycle it's not going to last as long for your five horsepower bump <laughs> so or whatever if you just did if you just did just did cylinders but anyways yeah if you want to make an engine horsepower make it breathe that's the whole deal but that's that's another story but Okay, uh, we're going to take those pistons. Okay, we're going to weigh these pistons. I've already done this before, but I, I lost you because I run out of space and didn't see that I run out of space. This is 103, one pound three ounces. And all the rest of these are 102.9. So we're very, very close. It's not, it's not like, I would like to have another one that's 102.9, but... I'm not going to file off anything to gain that much. Now, if it's a bunch, I would probably question them. These are supposed to be weighed and they're supposed to be within a certain amount. But I find it quite quite curious. Here's what I find quite curious is this is a, a high dollar set. A high dollar set. This was $200. And the double A's that I put in that engine over there uh, the engine in the blue bug when I first built it and it made noise blah 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 and I measured those pistons they were perfect each one of them was the same there was nothing different I mean they were all the same so and that was a hundred dollar set ninety nine dollar set sent to my door ninety nine bucks to my door well hundred dollars sent to my door this was two hundred dollars sent to my door and um, you know I guess the quality of the cylinders is a little better. It looks a little better anyways and stuff. But, you know, there's, there's, there's probably a quality difference, but it's kind of funny that the pistons weighed better on the cheap set than they did on this. Okay, uh, another thing I want to show you is uh, this has a ledge right here. So you're going to get it in, and you're going to say, why won't it go in? And then you'll take it all back apart, and you'll get, you're going to say, oh, there's a ledge there. And you kind of got to tap that ledge down. Uh, this is an original 1500 jug, and you can see that it also has a ledge. 
as well okay so it's this is not something new okay incidentally you can see how much meat on the 1500 and how much meat on the 1600 and there's considerably more uh, this you know that cylinder right there would go a couple hundred thousand miles you know you you could take and hone it and uh, put some rings on it and Bob's your uncle as long as you didn't get it really hot uh, it'd be fine just for someone who was not hot rotting or uh, taking care of their engine doing oil changes and stuff that uh, that's a very good quality cylinder right there you know how how much meat there is there and that's uh, what I was talking about earlier is how much meat and uh, as you bore these out you know you can only put it so big in there unless you open your case up you know you can buy one of those bubble cases with the with way opened up and then you can get thicker cylinders but for slip-ons for old cases uh, you know 1600 is that's that's all the farther I would go in my opinion that's just me though so okay well this is going to conclude the third part and uh, I'll get this on the net and the next thing we'll do is we'll take these cylinders and we will match them to the head and we will write uh, numbers on there and they will be matched to the head I'll show you how you do that next alright thanks for wrenching with me I'll see you around the next time